tough one. Um, I don't. I don't feel that my my hand picking technique is all that good, but I did work on it for a long time, mostly uh, studying with uh, a teacher named Dennis Sandoli, who had a very particular idea about how you were supposed to do this. Um, he uh, he advocated that you should play with with a uh, without contact on the guitar, you know, from the elbow. He liked bigger guitars for this, so you could rest your elbow there, and uh, he would he would make you. Uh, you know, basically touch the guitar only with your pick, which I can't say that I do really, because I, um, I, I don't really. I'm not a good. I'm not a good example of his his technique. Um, but I can tell you, I I saw an awful lot of players who who stuck with it and are, and have amazing control that way. It's particularly good for string skipping because if you're if you're anchored here like at the wrist, then you can see the angle that your pick change, in it, uh, this little circle that, that this sweep makes is quite, it's, it's quite a small circle, you know, and, and so it, me it turns out that the angle the pick is hitting the string at is changing. You might notice that you get uneven pick wear because of that, you know, because sometimes you're, you're, you're not hitting the string at the uh, at the perfect angle, the perfect angle, which allows you the shortest stroke, is with the pick exactly parallel to the string. You know, because uh, you can get past it, you can go back and forth with without covering as much distance. If you have to turn it like this, not only do you get a funny sound, but you have to travel a greater distance to get from one side of the string to the other and back again. So it's going to take more time. And if you're trying to speed up you're playing or and get the efficiency together and also get a clean sound you want to you want to make sure you are holding the pick at the right angle and that might require a little adjusting maybe with you know with a little movement like this that you just sort of squeeze a little more with your thumb as you get to the higher strings um, but Dennis's idea of keeping a, a pretty straight arm not stiff always relaxed but a pretty straight arm allows you to have as you can see, the circle here is a much bigger one. It's about this big instead of the smaller one. So, because you're covering a smaller angle, you know, fewer degrees in the circle, the angle of your pick isn't going to change uh, change quite as much. Went from you know the low E string to the high. So, with a little bit of adjusting, you can you can kind of keep that angle uh, true, and and I think that will ultimately pay off but you know this can take this can take certainly months and probably years to, to sort of really improve in, in a dramatic way plus a lot of us have bad habits that it's hard to break uh, I'm no exception to that one. Um, but you know um, I did do a lot of stuff where you know a lot of repetitive practice of lines and um, I mean even some exercises where skipping strings just to try to uh, you know get some control of the skipping you know um, I've played a lot of violin pieces the, you know some Bach ones that uh, you know that are that kind of force you to skip strings which uh, you know and get get, uh, get you know, there's a Paganini you know. But it, you can see that kind of stuff is, you know, it's, it's if, you, if you start slow and you pick something like that, I mean, it, it, it will definitely improve your accuracy and skipping strings. And, you know, I, I think it's mostly just time doing it right. If, if you can put in a lot of time doing it right, then you, you'll see results. But Dennis always used to recommend practicing at a tempo you can control. And that's a very good idea. Always practice it.